Now, at the time, then Constable O'Shane Thompson said he was acting in self defense after being attacked by Mr. Pearson at the party. However, he later fled to the United States, where he was arrested and deported to Jamaica in 2018 to stand a trial. Mr. Thompson is to be sentenced on October 22. For the first time in decades, members of the deaf community will be able to make police reports on their own. This after the launch of a 24-hour interpreting service system at the Halfway Tree and Mandeville police stations in St. Andrew and Manchester recently. As Kalisha Williams reports, members of the deaf community say they finally feel human. Usually, if a deaf person wants to make a police report in the island, they would have to be accompanied by a relative or a guardian. This is because police stations in Jamaica do not have interpreters. Now, all that is about to change. The Safe and Sound JA project is designed to address the communication barrier between the Jamaica Constabulary Force and the deaf community meaning deaf persons will have the option of going to the police station alone and file their own reports. The system will be made available island-wide by specially trained members of the JCF at the Mandeville and Halfway Tree police stations respectively. This service is being offered between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. In cases where reports are being made on a weekend or on public holidays, an appointment will have to be set, so you call the number of Mr. Aiken and you set an appointment to access an interpreter. Then a Zoom meeting using the PYC Zoom account will, should be activated with the interpreter. Now, President of the National Police Youth Club's Council, Letitia White, who led the initiative, explained the challenges faced by the deaf community over the years when making police reports. A police report when written on the account of a deaf person being interpreted by a relative is not valid in court due to potential inaccuracy, thus limiting the possibilities of a deaf person gaining full access to the justice system. I can remember as far back as 1984, during a course that I, when I started out, we attempted a project like this. But somewhere along the line, it failed. Um, so we are hoping that there's a continuity um, clause in this one. We are every probably six months or a year, we do some refreshers. Because as you know, police transfer from time to time. As for persons in the deaf community, the initiative is restoring their trust in the justice system. The deaf community feel as if, yes, now I can feel human, right? And we can go to police stations and make reports on our own. The initiative was funded by the United Nations Development Program to the tune of 10,000 U.S. dollars. Kalisha Williams, TVJ News. International stories when we return. And a time now for a look at some of the major stories from around the world. In news from the region, some Haitian migrants have started arriving at a new shelter in Mexico. That comes after they spent more than a week on the banks of the Rio Grande waiting to be processed by the United States immigration authorities. Around 100 migrants decided to remain in Mexico for fear of being deported if they crossed the border into the United States. On the international scene, a suicide car bombing has killed at least eight people in the Somali capital. Officials say at least eight others have been injured. In a short statement, the Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab claimed responsibility for the attack. The attack targeted a convoy headed towards the presidential palace as it waited at a busy checkpoint. And the Taliban in Afghanistan have shot and killed four alleged kidnappers and hung their bodies in public squares. According to a Taliban official, the aim of the action is to alert all criminals that they are not safe. Since the Taliban overran Kabul on August 15 and seized control of the country, Afghans and the world have been watching to see whether they will recreate their harsh rule of the late 1990s. 90s. 